What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I wanna show you guys how I bring my meteors into one image, but I also wanna take a few extra steps to show you guys how to clean it up as well. So, a little backstory with this shot, it was taken at Judge's Shack in Island Beach State Park, and I used the Nikon Z7 with a 20 millimeter 1.8S lens at f2.2. My shutter speed was 15 seconds, and my ISO was 2500. Now I took roughly 450 photos over the course of about three hours to help me capture as many meteors as possible. Now this wasn't on peak night, so peak night was roughly 120 meteors per hour. This was the day after, which was only 16 meteors per hour. So I was able to capture, I think about six meteors, but they were pretty big and uh, it worked out really well. So I'm still pleased with what I was able to get. Now, what we're gonna do is an additional step to clean this image up. So let me just get out of here really quick. And I have a folder here called Stack, which is a series of images that I took from the time-lapse. And we're gonna stack them using Starry Landscape Stacker. Or if you have a PC, then you're going to wanna use Sequator. And you just wanna make sure you pick images from your time-lapse that are nice and clean, meaning there's no planes or comets in them. Um, and you'll typically want to use between 10 to 15 shots, which should be plenty to clean up the image. So I'm going to open up Starry Landscape Stacker right here. And I have my folder of images. Hit open. Now this process is going to be very similar if you're using Sequator. You're going to have to mask out the sky, and then it's going to stack everything together to create that nice clean image. All right, so I just need to fill the sky up with these dots to help create the mask, hit find sky. And did a pretty good job. Just have to paint around here and up in the corners and a few spots over here. And then hit align and composite. Let's just zoom in really quick. And you can see it cleaned up quite nicely. The stars are trailing a little bit just because I was shooting this at 15 seconds. Uh, normally, I try and keep it a little bit lower, between 10 to 13 seconds when using the Z7. But I wasn't too worried about the stars um, being perfectly sharp since I was mostly going after these meteors. Alright, so now we just got to hit save. And then save out the image where you want it. Jumping back to Lightroom, I imported the stacked image right here, and then these photos are all my meteor shots. So what I wanna do is select the meteor shots, and I wanna increase my noise reduction, just so they're a little less noisy. Um, so when I blend them with my nice clean image, you don't have like a weird graininess around the meteors. So let's just increase that to around uh, 15 or 20. You know, I'm gonna go a little bit higher to 25. And that's just going to smooth out the area around the meteor and it'll help it blend a little bit easier with this image. So now that that's done, we're going to select all the images, including my base image and go to edit, open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and we wanna bring our base layer to the bottom here. So just drag that down. And I just wanna hide all these other layers. Now clicking on the first layer above it, here's our first meter that we're going to bring in. And we wanna create a layer mask, and there's a couple of different ways we could do this by pressing this button right here. If you're using a pro panel, you could press this button right here. And we also want to hide this layer by filling it with black. So if I hold down the shift key and press the pro panel button, that'll make it black. If you don't have the pro panel, no big deal. You could hold down uh, Command I for Mac. And if you're using a PC, I believe it's Control I. So that's going to fill this. And then if I hold down the Shift key, I could hide that layer. And next, I just want to zoom a little bit closer to the meteor. Right about there. And grab my brush. Make sure that it's on white. The hardness is set to zero and we could change the size by using the bracket key or you can manually change it right here. So let's uh, get a little bit closer to the size of this meteor. 
that's pretty good right there. Now holding down the shift key, I'm going to press once with my mouse and then press again at the tail. And that's going to create a straight line. Now this is slightly curved, so we might have to fix that, but I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Let's uh, unhide this layer mask. And now it is on the base layer, but because it did curve a little bit, you could see that it gets a little faint right here. So we just have to fix this a little bit because that was a straight line that we just drew. So I'm gonna actually use the backslash button. And now I can see my drawing right here with the paintbrush. So switching back to black, we're gonna just fix this by filling it in. And then switch to white and I'll make the brush a little bit smaller and just go right back over the meteor and again you can just switch back to black and get this really tight to the meteor and as I was saying before, this one's curved, so it's a little bit trickier, but um, the rest of them I think are pretty straight, so it shouldn't be much of an issue. And hit the backslash button again to unhide that. I'll zoom out, you can see how well that blended. So moving up to the next image, we'll select that, and we're gonna repeat the process. So create a layer mask, make it black, then we're gonna hide it, zoom into the meteor, make sure white's selected and grab a brush that's very close to the size of the meteor. Holding down the shift key, I press once. Don't let the shift key go. Go to the tail of the comet, press again. You can hit the backslash key to see what you just did. And we could unhide this layer. And there you go, it's on the base layer, really quick and easy. Jump to the next one repeat the process hold it down the shift key press once press again backslash to double check it I could have made the brush a little bit smaller but that's okay unhide it proceeding to the next image I'm just gonna go through the rest of these images but you get the process And there we have it, that was really fast once you get the hang of it. And now I have all my meteors in one image and I could do any further editing if I wanted to, but um, I just wanted to show you guys my tutorial on how to create a cleaner meteor shot. And uh, hopefully you guys can get out and shoot one soon and try this out. So thank you guys again for watching. Take care, bye bye.